Hello and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host Latavia and if this is your first time this is a weekly podcast where I talk about the joys and challenges of adulting and I from time to time will have guests to join me to share their experiences sometimes expertise. Um, for those of you who have been listening welcome back and today I am on the eve well as i'm recording this i'm on the eve of my birthday and i thought this morning of literally a year ago we were in the pandemic so i'm celebrating yet another birthday in the pandemic but before i get too far into that i want to introduce my guests for today which are my parents they are not new to the podcast but they may be new to those of you who are just joining so mom dad would you all introduce yourself Hello, Latavia. Guess who I am? I am mom. <laughs> and, and mom, what's your name, name <laughs> other than mom? My name is Violet. Hello, everybody. It's such a joy to have Latavia here on the eve of her birthday. Thank you for having us. All right. Yes, and I am Felix, her father. And I'm also elated and delighted to have you here with us. And that we get a chance, the opportunity to to enjoy and to celebrate your birthday as well. Yes, it's nice to be here. Also, it's been a while since I was home for my birthday. <laughs> yes. um, so yeah. So um, as with all episodes, I want to start off by just talking about something that we're grateful for. So, Mom, I'll let you go first. Something, someone that you're grateful for. Well, you know, as I was reflecting this morning, as I was driving, I just, I was like. I, I was just saying, I am so grateful. I am so grateful. And then all of a sudden, I was like, I am so thankful and so grateful that Jesus, Jesus, God gave his only begotten son that I can have eternal life. I was like, me. It's like, it just hit me this morning. And that was like, God, I am so grateful. And it could be because the uh, resurrection is right around the corner. And I was just, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that he thought enough to give his only son that I could have eternal life. Yes, that that is the ultimate <laughs> gratitude right there. I mean, I have, thank God for Jesus, literally. <laughs> yes, I mean. We are right around here. You said Easter Sunday is coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> what about you? <laughs> all right, yes, I guess we yes. just put it out there. We're all grateful for Jesus. Yes, we yes. Well, I just want to especially say yes. how grateful I am. All right. No, I, I'm. I'm just. I think about each and every day. I, I I try to have a spirit of gratitude each and every day, and certainly grateful to be alive, grateful to be in good health, to, to be with family, to be able to interact with others, and. Certainly grateful, most of all, that God has blessed me and blessed us. But greater than, than that is that we've been blessed enough so that we can be a blessing to others. So, yeah, so blessed to be a blessing, I would say that's something I have always, I would say I am, have always been appreciative of being able to see that. Because mm -hmm. growing up, you guys are, have always <laughs> been <laughs> giving um, to others, whether it be of time or actual things i in cars specifically come to mind <laughs> there's been a few cars that were given away but um i'm honestly just great aside from being grateful to be here and actually be able to spend some extended time with you all um grateful to be able to see another day to be allowed mm -hmm. to see another year especially like in general but especially given the fact that we are still in this pandemic and so many lives have been lost and I think it's easy to start to take things and people for granted and time and so it's mm -hmm. just like because at first I was like oh this 34 that's not a milestone birthday but then it's like no <laughs> it's a milestone because <laughs> I'm alive to see another day and mm -hmm. to celebrate another birthday and it's not guaranteed and especially knowing that there are so many people who lost their lives mm -hmm. last in this pandemic and even you know we've lost family members and friends of the family um as well so i'm just i'm actually just grateful to be alive mm -hmm. and and yeah. 34 is maybe not a particular milestone but when you think about the fact that there are people who are dying who don't even reach the age of 34 
So every year is, is, is a blessing. Every day is a blessing. So we need to be mindful of that. Yes. And as you said that, I thought about, um, I watched uh, Judas and the Black Messiah recently. And Fred Hampton didn't make it to see 20. I think he was like 20. He wasn't even 26 mm -hmm. when he was murdered. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just putting that in context of just, yeah, there's so much, so many people who don't live mm -hmm. to see that. So. Um, but with it being as me thinking about my birthday and um, I've shared on the podcast before that I tend to do my kind of New Year's resolutions or new goals or things. Mm -hmm. I do that on my birthday as opposed to the end of December because that's when my New Year starts. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've been thinking it's like, oh, OK, I'm getting closer. Oh, we're still in a pandemic. And I felt myself kind of focusing on all the things that I want to do or wanted to do, but mm -hmm. feel like I can't really do it or don't feel comfortable or safe doing because of the circumstances. And I started to kind of get down and it's like, wait, no, let's flip this because, okay, no, you can't do those things, but they're still, you're still alive. Mm -hmm. um, and I just literally was having a conversation with myself the other day, like, no, you've got this going on and just running down a list of things that. I do have and that are going well you know think on these things mm -hmm. um and it just got me thinking I'm like okay instead of I have goals they have, but they haven't really I wouldn't say they really changed from before but my primary goal going into 34 is to continue implementing the things that I started mm -hmm. implementing for 33 um and embrace continuing to embrace the fact that no is an anointed word um, <laughs> because i i you know how that you say you know something but you don't really know it mm -hmm. um i would say that kind of got in my spirit <laughs> at 33 of yeah i don't owe any i don't owe people an explanation i don't owe you anything and if i don't actually want to do it I don't have to. Girl, don't you better me. preach. <laughs> say. So that, I would say, a goal is to continue to be consistent in mm -hmm. owning who I am, my boundaries, my space, those things of just, okay. And I think back, like, there was a video I saw of a little girl where she was just like, mm, if it don't make my spirit, like, for my spirit, if it don't make me feel right, I don't like it. I don't want to do it. And the girl was, like, maybe five or six. And I was just like, hmm. <laughs> She got it figured out already. <laughs> you keep that energy. Um, so I would say that is that. And I feel like in, in 33, learning to trust God and trust my instincts mm -hmm. and not question. Yeah. Um, so those are, I would say, my two overarching, like, this is what I want to do going into 34 and, and, and going forward. Um so otherwise, I just feel like I've been reflective, mm -hmm. especially like being here with you all. It's like, oh, I'm home. I'm with my parents on my birthday and like just thinking about some of the different experiences <laughs> over the last 30, 30 years. Um, <laughs> wow, it seems like such a long time. Huh? Well, no, but it, I guess that's the crazy thing is growing up 30 or in your 30s seems so much older and all the stuff that I thought would happen in 30s to where what 33 years is actually is is so different. And it's just like, y'all had us fooled. Y'all really <laughs> made it seem because y'all were doing it. Because I think about the fact that y'all were in your 30s when you had me. Like you all were 30 when you had me. And growing up, 30s and just seemed so much older because you all were living life, <laughs> raising children, doing all these things. And so when I think of it in, in context of that, I'm 33, I'm still single, I don't have any children. I mean, I'm living life and I'm, I'm doing well, but it just like, oh, am I, am I missing the mark? Am I right where I need to be? Like, I know that I'm right where I need to be, but it's just all of those things. But it's just like, okay, as I'm reflecting, you all have literally known me my whole life. So I wanted to include you all in this <laughs> kind of trip down memory lane of just what are some of your, I guess, first memories or some of the highlights or things about me. Um, and I'm going to start with, you know, finding out you were having me. 
I'm going to let Dad go first, since he was instrumental in bringing that to pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Exciting, huh? Exciting. Yeah, it was. I, I, think, I think the fact that um, it took a while in terms of, you know, Paula being able to conceive, uh, the challenges that were involved and the things that we went through, uh, the initial pregnancy was topical and had to be aborted per se not aborted, uh, not aborted but basically <laughs> Term terminated ended, yes. ended early. yeah ended early and so when she finally uh did conceive and the excitement of of you being born uh unfortunately i was in the you know air force at the time and so i was not there at your birth and i was i was tdy i was away so I was excited about you being born, but then when I got an assignment to go away, I think I was in officer's training school or something like that in, in Alabama when, when you were born. So let me, right there, since you didn't miss that you weren't there for the birth, this, it was even more exciting because I brought her to Alabama to yes, see you. Exactly. This little bundle of joy. <laughs> so I, that's why I had all this traveling started. Yeah. <laughs> It started, started real early. early. Yeah, because yeah. he got to see you around six weeks. Six weeks, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Came to Alabama, and so it was. It was definitely exciting. Um, always wanted to be a father. Uh, excited about the opportunity, and uh, my goal was to to be the father that I never had. And uh, you, and eventually your sister, provided me with that opportunity, and I was always excited about it. So much so, <laughs> so much so that since I was not there at your birth, and since your mother carried you these nine months, whenever it was time to provide for you, i.e. wake up and feed you or change you, <laughs> it was my responsibility. <laughs> so, so uh, but yeah, that was that was it. I was I was the I was uh, the one that got up, and made your bottles. <laughs> changed your diapers took care of you through the through the day so with that i took the scripture literally <laughs> the scripture says father train up, train up a child <laughs> and i mean and you were good at it too i appreciate it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and much I, and i enjoyed it too i always had this this mindset that i wanted my daughters to love me as much as children love their mom <laughs> and I, I realized that there's a different type of love or a different type of connection, but that was my goal. <laughs> I wanted I wanted that to happen, and I worked hard to to, to bring that to pass. And uh, would you would you agree he was successful? I would say yeah. <laughs> I think you you were successful. Or you have succeeded in that. Because um, I can give an example. It could be raining outside, and it could be raining, and I'll say it's raining. Dad would say no, the sun is shining. The table would say, yeah, the sun is shining. <laughs> so, yeah, I think you were very successful in that. It's not that, it's not that serious. Yes, it is that serious. With the yes, I do. I would say I have a lot. A lot of my personality comes from dad. But as I've gotten older, I have realized it's, it's equal parts, Felix and Violet. Mm -hmm running here so yes um but no i definitely say i think you succeeded in that and i can say growing up i always remember i mean both of you all being there but i can definitely say i remember spending time and doing things with you um part of why i had now have a pretty strong tolerance to being tickled <laughs> is because there were several tickle fests or bouts whatever you want to call them where you would tickle jasmine and i so that is definitely like something that stands out. The tickling, the tickle sessions is definitely a highlight. But before we get too much further, mom, I feel like I've heard bits and pieces of the story, but of I looked like I was premature, but I was actually overdue. So there was some some maneuverings and some shenanigans and things that went <laughs> on to get me to encourage me to come out. What was that? That you went to a game or a, oh, a, a, what oh, was it? A, a oh, party something? Yeah, the interesting birth, huh? Yeah, I was at a uh, basketball game. We were in Colorado to the Denver, Denver. I forgot who was playing the game that night. 
at uh, Denver Nuggets. I was playing somebody, and this lady named Chris Wheaton, she says, you know, you got to jump. You got to do a lot of walking. You got to do a lot of moving. Because I think the, the birth, the um, due date they had given me was like, had been almost two weeks gone. And I definitely didn't want to have a cesarean. So I went to the game that night. All big. <laughs> But I was determined I'm going to walk, I'm going to jump. So at the game, I was jumping up, cheering, and just having a good time. So when we leave the game, I had no idea when people would say your water break. I had no idea what that was like. So your godmother, we was coming from the game, and I was like, ooh, I feel something. feel something running down my legs. And Carol was like, girl, your water broke. I was like, what? <laughs> so then we went from the game. At the game, but at the game, it was over. Went to the hospital, and I went into labor. So I was like, wow, at what I had gone through losing the first pregnancy, and I was like, the second one, no, 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 no. We're going to have this baby. So my water broke from the jumping and cheering. Went to the hospital, and maybe eight hours later, you were delivered, and you were so tiny. <laughs> I mean, as much weight as I had gained, <laughs> and I just knew that I was going to be. You were going to be like 10, 11 pounds, <laughs> but you were very, very tiny. So you were so tiny that people thought you were premature, but it was a full term. So how we had to modify, we couldn't get a regular bassinet for you to sleep in. We had to make like a little teeny box <laughs> and put you beside the bed so you could sleep beside us. And you didn't actually get in a real car seat until <laughs> a real car seat until you were about eight months old because you were very, very tiny. And then all of a sudden that Similac kicked in. That and was the old story. Mm -hmm. Yes. But yeah, thank God for a healthy Latavia. Yes. So I guess thirty four years later. Look what mm -hmm. the Lord has done. Mm -hmm. So you were you were the precursor to like I don't know if you see now a lot of women they have videos of like they're dancing in the hospital mm -hmm. or before trying to mm -hmm. get the baby to come. So you were doing it. Yours just wasn't recorded because mm -hmm. clearly and thankfully this was all before social media. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. So, but I do. I still have a video of your birth. I have not seen this video. <laughs> I've heard about it. You got to find it. Huh? It's here somewhere. I'm sure it's. Then you also have, have to find the VCR. The old, the, old, <laughs> the old tape type that we had. I don't know if it's still. Was that VHS or was that before? VHS, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they have different um, mm -hmm. companies and stuff that convert it now. Yeah. But I think I'm okay with not seeing it. Yeah. As from, I don't know that I want or need to see that video now. I'm good. Um, just like I don't necessarily think I need to go back to Cheyenne, Wyoming anymore. <laughs> um, good, that it. <laughs> good old Cheyenne. Mm -hmm. So I've heard, mm -hmm. yes. but I'm not from there. Um, but that would say that is another, I guess, kind of highlight I have because I remember we moved around so many. You know, mm -hmm. we had moved around, but I remember saying, "Oh, I want to see well, why." I mean, I get why, but it was just like, "Oh, I want to see where I was born. I want to go," and kept asking. So then. I think that was, I guess it was the summer after fifth grade mm, or sixth remember. grade. We were in Fayetteville, though, mm -hmm. um, and you guys planned a road trip. So that way we went, I think that was my, that's the first road trip that I remember outside of us just like going to visit family. But mm -hmm. we left Fayetteville, we went to, we went to Memphis. Yes, I remember. <laughs> We went to Memphis and we saw the Lorraine Motel. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think we went to Colorado Springs mm -hmm. and then we went to Wyoming mm -hmm. and some of the people that you all knew were still there. So I got to see where I was born. I'm good. It was, I don't know what <laughs> I was expecting, but it was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't remember this, but it's nice. I can say that I saw it. Yeah. And then on the way back, I think we went to St. Louis or we went somewhere in Missouri because mm -hmm. one of your co-workers was, former co-workers was stationed there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we went somewhere else before we stopped, but I don't remember where. Yeah, I don't recall either. Me either. But I know, on the, I know on the way there, we went to Tennessee. Maybe we went to Colorado Springs on the way back. I don't remember, but 
that was that was a fun but long road, road trip. trip. Yeah. But we had that was when we still had a van <laughs> and I wasn't driving, so it was enjoyable for me. Um, but yeah, so those are two I would say. But are there any other memories or things that stand out um, from the last? 33 years. Well, there's a lots of memory, but the one thing that, that, that comes to mind to me, um, I think I always encourage the two of you to, the way you conduct yourself, the way you carry yourself, um, in terms of being respectful, to the being polite. Here. And we went, uh, you and I were out one day, we went shopping, and um, we were just walking through the store. Kroger's. Uh, yes, Kroger's. And a lady approached you and was making some type of comment. And you were extremely polite, very respectful. And the lady in turn gave you a teddy bear. No, she asked her something. Asked her a question and the teddy bear said, yes, ma'am. And she was shocked. Mm -hmm. She was very shocked. She has manners. And that big pink teddy bear. Remember how big yes, it was? White it pink? Was, it was a stuffed. I thought it was a stuffed dog. No, no, no. Oh, you had the dog. Yeah, the no. big teddy bear she gave, you she gave you because you because you were so polite, it was so respectful. Rare that you would find kids that age who was well mannered. Yeah, and that was just a, a, a reminder that the way you conduct yourself and you carry yourself is appreciated, and and so that was something I remember in terms of the way you conduct yourself as a just from a uh, from a little girl being polite, being respectful. And that was rewarded instantly at that particular time. So that's one of the memories. I remember that, like I said, I thought it was a... No, I remember it was the way it was. Mm -hmm. I'm not disputing that. I just also remember there being like a stuffed dog. So maybe that was something that you had one of your maybe crossing gifts or something mm -hmm. that yeah, I had yes. just, I also remember somehow kind of adopting that as my mm -hmm. own. No, that had nothing to do with that. Either. I know. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's a whole other story. Um, no, I do remember that. I, I remember because I, but, and I, I would say you thinking of that for a long time in my mind, that meant being polite or being mm -hmm. nice was rewarded that's or right. that was, and I've since learned <laughs> That's not how things work. Not to say, not, not, <laughs> not to yeah. say that I'm now. I'm not trying to. You know, I just. I'm not gonna be polite. I'm gonna be whatever. But I would say that's one of those things. Um, when you say you think about childhood experiences and mm -hmm. they kind of you create a narrative or a story in your mm -hmm. mind of how things are. And so I realized, like for a long time, in my mind was, well, if I'm nice, if I'm polite, then you should be happy you should be nice to me or i should get things and so why and so i realized i had not the it wasn't it started off from like a good or pure intention but it had mm -hmm. kind of been warped a bit of just like no no people don't care that you're polite <laughs> actually sometimes that kind of encourages people to try to take advantage of you yeah and i learned that the hard way as well but I'm still grateful for that memory and yeah. now the understanding of the, you know, it was someone was showing appreciation mm -hmm. for that or acknowledging it, but that doesn't mean that this is how it's always going to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, when you said, when you were started talking, I wasn't thinking you were going there. I thought you were going to the whole dare to dream situation but yeah, um, yeah that, that's a part of it but um, as we stepped through that was one of the earlier reminders but at the same time when you think about that one I also think about the time when you encountered your first issue with some form of racism prejudice oh yeah when you were in, in, in Water elementary rice. school and you went to school in Centerville. Centerville, and and one of the kids um, did not want to play with you. Said they weren't allowed to play with you because you of the color of your skin. You don't remember that? I must have blocked that one out. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> apparently I blocked that one out because yes, I sir. yeah I don't. I mean I know that I experienced racism young, but I can never because like people say oh when was the first time you were you knew you were black or whatever. 
I know that it was I was young, mm -hmm. but I can never pinpoint a specific that that thing. That was the first encounter that we were aware of <laughs> oh, we, at the school. We remember mm -hmm. it real well because we went to the school the next day. Miss Forbes, we wanted to <laughs> we wanted to know why wasn't that addressed on the playground? Oh, because you shared it with us that night you were in the tub. Mm -hmm. That this little girl told you that she wasn't allowed to play with you because of your color. And you was like, well, what's wrong with my color? Because you had no idea what it was all about. So we went to the school and it was all taken care of, but that was your first encounter with racism. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you learn something new every day, yeah. literally. Yeah, no, I, I remember, like what I remember from Centerville or Georgia specifically is I had a lot of white friends, mm -hmm. <laughs> or like I not that they they were black people, but they were from church. But mm -hmm. I I remember having you know a white little boyfriend or whatever I thought it was at the mm -hmm. time, and my best friend was a white girl, um, yes. and I remember before we left Georgia, we went to a school that was predominantly black. Mm -hmm. But I feel like prior to really prior to us moving to Fayetteville. More, I was with white people more, um, mm -hmm. or that was who it seemed like we were around. Mm -hmm. um, but hmm, <laughs> interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, th thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> for that bit of information. You know, that but, revelation. But the other piece, I think, even in Georgia, and I used to take pride in this, is when uh, you guys were going to school, or in, I guess, when you were in in the daycare. And the opportunity to pack your lunches and things like that. I, oh gosh! I, I thoroughly enjoyed that aspect because not only did I make sure you have adequate lunch, I made sure you had adequate snacks, and yes. uh, it was just it, I, I took pride in it because mm -hmm. I wanted to make yeah. sure you guys did not get hungry. Yeah, he made sure as if you guys were going on a camping trip <laughs> okay. every day, every I... day a camping trip. And you were only going to school for <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and you come home for dinner. Mm -hmm. But dad, he no, was good with that. He was the lunch king, like yes, the lunch yes. packing king. Because I remember, and that went even into, I think when we were in Delaware, like we were like, "Mom, can dad make our lunch? Like, can dad make it?" Because if for those who know me and know that I snack, I would say that's where it started. Yes, got to make sure you have your snacks. Um, but you know, that was, I always appreciated You mean that. you don't give mom credit for making your yes, I did. It was, it was nice. It was, <laughs> when she made it, it was, it wasn't that it wasn't good. It was good. It was, you had what you needed. <laughs> you had the basics and maybe a snack. <laughs> With that, you had your sandwich, your whatever. And then it was like maybe two or three extra snacks, uh, extra juice. <laughs> like <laughs> some for the next day, just in case. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know it was basically there for in the event that you want to share with somebody. And no, and I and I was That's gonna say it definitely a lot of times like and I don't know if kids still do this, but you know like trade or oh, I'll trade you this for mm -hmm. that. It it made for great trading uh, mm -hmm. options <laughs> at lunch. <laughs> it's like, like I'll give you this, or you know, and there were definitely times where oh you have if somebody didn't have something mm -hmm. oh here. Mm -hmm. I have another one, so yeah. and that maybe could have been uh, a trait. That's why you love sharing now. Probably, because uh, mm -hmm. I to this day am always, even when like road trips. Since I've been on the road a whole lot more <laughs> lately, um, road trips or when I'm going, like my friends, they joke me like, "Okay, thanks, mom," because I always have. Wherever I go, I always have some type of snack and I usually put extra in my purse, which is really the only reason I carry a purse is so that I can have extra stuff. But, um, but yeah, I guess it started early. Mm -hmm. but yeah. yes. Passed on from your grandma. <laughs> yes. Yes. Always have enough for somebody else. That is true. Mm -hmm. Now, as much as I enjoy hearing about all these lovely memories and highlights, I know, <laughs> I know that it was not always sunshine and, and roses. So what are some of the, uh, I guess, a a low moment or one where it was like you were not as pleased or 
as they say in the professional world, was a growth opportunity. <laughs> they started. They started probably before you were a year old. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, we're going, we going in the reverse. Uh, of course, I thought we was progressing on we're to thirty. We were going near thirty-four. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. But I know what you're doing. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I think you know, it wasn't even. A, I wouldn't call it a low moment. It was just that <laughs> you were one to test the waters. And, uh, you, you. There was a time when, I guess you, like I said, even before you were a year old, uh, there was something you wanted to do, and we specifically told you no, and um, you kind of decided that that's something you wanted to do, so you looked and waited to see if, if we weren't looking, and you proceeded to grab something off the table. And we saw her do it, yes. and you said, stop, don't do it again. And so um, you went to do it. And you got your first spanking prior to a year of age. <laughs> mm, like nine months? Oh, it was nine. I heard six. I thought no, it was six. No, 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 Either no. way, I've heard this so much, I almost have a memory of it, even though I don't remember it happening. But, yeah. So that was a down moment, huh? I guess. I imagine it was yeah, if well, I got more, popped. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but I guess the one that probably mom remembered most was probably Delaware when we were... We would get up in the morning and we would go walking or go running. And uh, oh, 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 yes, the TV. We, and, and, that was actually here in Fayetteville. Oh, it was in Fayetteville. I thought yeah, it was Delaware. Yeah, Ryan and Travis was yeah, there. Yeah. Yes. It was the first day of sixth grade. Yes, and so uh, when we came back, you were watching TV, and um, that was a no-no. No TV in during the week, only on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Focus on grades, and uh, you decided you wanted to have some TV, <laughs> and you had to pay for that time. I remember. Yes, yes. How did she pay? Just a little discipline. My, oh. my last, the last spanking I ever got mm. was, and I remember, but yeah, so I would watch TV while y'all went. I had to think I had, like, yeah, I thought I had a time because my window, my room faced the front of the house. And so they would go running. Thankfully, this was a time where they didn't make us go. But they went walking or running, and then they, they were coming back. I thought I had turned it off quick enough, but apparently I hadn't. And they caught the reflection in the window, and I thought they, I didn't think anything of it. They come back in and then like they come in the room and yeah, it was, yeah, that wasn't a pleasant the way to start the school year or the day having to go to school. <laughs> um, but I, like I said, that was the last time <laughs> that I got, I would say the thing in Delaware that I remember. So yes, house arrest got <laughs> created in Fayetteville for one of my cousins when they that were living with us. Wasn't. No, I'm saying it got created. It was. Oh. <laughs> it was created oh, oh. in Fayetteville, but then it was uh, implemented. In re, re, uh, it returned and was revised <laughs> in Delaware because uh -huh. that one I remember. I think something had happened with Jasmine, and I was she. Was, I think she couldn't use her phone, but I was letting her use mine. Whatever it was, me trying to help people, <laughs> trying to. It was I ended up getting in trouble trying to help her or somebody else mm -hmm. and then I ended up on house arrest and I remember I know I couldn't drive it was like go to school I don't know if I was working at that time but whatever it was all I could do was go to school go to church and come home and did you pull the TV out of the room yes mm -hmm. yeah it was it was real unpleasant. <laughs> so with all that, from birth until we fast forward a little to high school, mm -hmm. with the structure and the discipline, how do you feel that has contributed to your growth? Hmm, I should have known this was coming. No, um, but I'm saying you had such a structured uh, upbringing and your environment was mostly structured. There was discipline. Discipline was implemented at an early age. And so I'm just asking how how do you feel that that has contributed through your to your growth through the years? And have you rebelled, especially when it relates to you know I look at drawers being opened and emptied mm. <laughs> because clothes weren't properly put away, folded. <laughs> so is it so the growth? How has it helped you develop? 
uh let me let me how where do i begin no it's definitely contributed um and i would say it's been a i think more positive mm -hmm. than negative um in the sense of yes it was a lot of structure discipline so it helped me since school was my life and career until <laughs> like 27 um or really 25 and then really closer to 30 but anywho um so i think it helped in that sense and of, of being able to focus and have tunnel vision when i needed to in terms of school uh and even in just as i've left the house and living on my own and being able to manage myself also when it comes to work or career i definitely believe that i have benefited there and even just kind of with us moving as much as we did with a lot of the things that were you all were doing at home that i i know for a long time i thought was just kind of that's what people did i it wasn't until later that i realized that it was not the norm <laughs> but one of the things that i know where it benefited like while we were in school is oftentimes when we moved they were the school the districts were in different places mm -hmm. but i never felt behind mm -hmm. um because they were we were always doing things at home <laughs> it's not about the multiplication tables um and that was how we got an allowance or i remember i i but I learned 9 through 12 so that I could get a Where's Waldo camera. <laughs> um, so I think it, it definitely gave me a strong work ethic. Um, the things where, in terms of, you say, rebelling, I believe I still keep my, my home and my space clean. It is not to the level that was required growing up. Um, definitely still a little got some little ptsd or trauma from you know coming home and drawers and everything being tossed so he would do these periodic checks because we have to fold everything um and so if a drawer was not closed or if he opened it and there were some things that weren't folded or it was disorganized he would literally toss the room and so we would come home and all of our drawers would be out some stuff might be out of the closet and we had to refold and put everything back together in its place before bedtime. <laughs> um, so to that end, I would say I still make a point to fold my clothes and have things organized during, you know, throughout the hustle, the, the like kind of the course of the week. I may not always put everything back right away, but I think where it kind of kicks back in is after a few days, if things aren't in place, I start to feel like kind of, I don't know if it's my anxiety gets higher, but I just <laughs> feel like, oh, this is chaos. I can't do it. And so I go and I address it. Even <laughs> during the pandemic, I don't remember when it was, but we had been a few months in at that point. And it was like, I had started, I was like, oh, I need to change my room around. And then it was, I'm going to do what I did, what you did. And I tossed all my drawers, like I tossed everything out of my drawers and then I refolded everything to just like, okay, when I go in, I can see this, what this shirt is, or where this one is. And I guess because I grew, I had gotten accustomed to that when I do have things organized and it's clear, <laughs> it's like, oh. I can breathe a little easier. And that's so so the lesson with that was not about clothing. You're right. It's about order and, and being at peace. And I, I recognize that I don't function well in chaos. And I think growing up, it seemed like it was more about that. But now I realize that you was Mr. Miyagi and I. <laughs> um, some wax on, wax off. But yeah, so it's, and that's the same of like in at home in my room or if it's, how I keep the kitchen or even though we all don't think in my car I like to keep things clear <laughs> it's gonna get cleaned I keep getting the side eye about my car not being washed <laughs> um, but it is a transport vehicle at this point um but yeah so I, I like I said I appreciate it there are definitely times where I would say the you always say I rebelled against the structure mainly when I went to college um and even now that was a deep side <laughs> I think it was for me it was realizing oh 
there's more out here <laughs> like I knew that there was more but in some respects it was it was overwhelming in some cases of just like oh there is so much more and I don't really know only thing all I know is this mm -hmm. and so if it's not this then it must be wrong and so it took a, a long time um, to try to figure out a healthy balance of okay because I remember and, and I'm sure my friends from college <laughs> can attest to this but it was just, oh that was wrong and i and looking back it's like oh it was heavy you were real judgmental um not thinking that i was but it was just if it wasn't this and it wasn't what the church you know the, this whatever <laughs> then it must be wrong or that's whatever you can't do this you can't do that and it's no actually they can and you can too it's just everything is not you know in this box or this that she thought it was and so I know that I can look back now and I think it was I probably pushed a lot of people away un unintentionally um trying to figure it out <coughs> so it's like in that respect it's like I appreciate it but also wish that maybe some of the conversations we have now that I'm an adult that okay but if we would had some of these <laughs> a little sooner then could have maybe helped ease that transition a bit but at the same time i'm grateful for it um and i would say <laughs> the only other <laughs> the thing that stands out in terms of college years and i think you know where i'm going <laughs> uh, so didn't couldn't date or didn't date in school but didn't i had guy friends couldn't date. in high school couldn't date? Yeah, I couldn't. No, I wouldn't have said you couldn't date. You were specifying. Oh, it the, was maturity. Yes. Oh, so well, I you, guess you, you we never matured. It, you defined it as couldn't date. We just specifically wanted to know who and get to know them. Well, yeah, that is certainly not the way I interpreted it See? because yeah. even what I had, I went to prom. I had a date for prom, but. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we, we won't go down that road. But the thing, like I said, that stands out in terms of the f having the phone, cell phones in college, uh, there was a time in terms of that structure and discipline, you know, it was still on their plan. And I don't know who was going through the phone bill, but there was this thing of the thought of no need to be on the phone after 11. <laughs> um... And apparently there was a night or something where there was phone calls on the bill. This was back when you got the itemized bill and it showed you who you called. But basically, long story short, my mom called someone randomly because she saw a number on the bill after a certain time. And in her mind, that shouldn't have been happening. And I want to know who this is. And she called someone, didn't tell me. <laughs> The only reason I know is because and it happened to be a guy like that. We were just cool. And I think it was probably like we had gone out afterwards. Everybody was trying to figure out where we're going to meet up, whatever. Um, announced to me sometime later, Miss V here calls the person. No idea. Never said anything. <laughs> but then one day I'm at work. And he, I worked at the uh, information desk and he was like walking by and he's like, oh, we were just talking. He's like, oh yeah, I talked to your mom the other day. She called, I'm like, what do you mean? You don't know my mom, what are you talking about? And then he's like, yeah, no, nah, she called me. That was probably one of the most embarrassing moments um, because it was just like, wait. Why mom? embarrassing? Your mom care about you. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom cares about you. Now, don't you left out the part about who coerced me into calling? I said I don't know who was going through the bill. I just know you were the one that made the phone call. But I was the one that showed up at the at the oh, door. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. One reason I was so I mean I didn't want y'all to move, but I was grateful when they moved to North Carolina. <laughs> It was because before they lived in Delaware and if things were not going the way they thought they should, you know, because they thought I had gone crazy. He it's at least two times that I can think of that my dad would call me and basically be like, yeah, I'll be outside in about 15 minutes. <laughs> Come outside. 
mind you, I'm in Philly. I'm in school. It's a weekday. Because I remember one of the times I had an exam. I had a test or an exam the next day. I didn't know he was coming. I was planning to study. And then he just popped up and was like, yeah, we need to talk. Oh, okay. All right. That was... That was an embarrassing moment? No, I mean, nobody knew. It was just a, like, what's going on? What could I have done? Mm -hmm. And I know in and, and, and those moments, it was okay, you raised me, you did all of these things, so why would you think I would do anything to jeopardize what I have going on? Mm -hmm. um, or why would you think I'd be doing something inappropriate? Like, that's what the thought was in those moments of, I'm always polite, I'm always doing good, I'm always doing these things. Mm -hmm. So why would you, you know, why don't you trust me enough that if I say I'm not doing something or I say I'm doing this, why is it a question or why aren't you giving me the freedom to try to figure some of this out? Like that is, I can say now, like that was, I think that were the, were the feelings um, that I had in those moments. But excuse me. And I believe that could be wrong. You came up with the theme for your podcast. It's all good. So I believe with your childhood rearing, your environment, your surroundings, the people, your circle, your parenting, the extended family, it's all good. It all worked out for your good. And as I was asking you earlier, how has it helped you develop into, let's say, personal, professional your goals, how has all that helped you to propel and is, are some things that you could that you would like to have done differently before you reach that awesome age of 34 or was that too much? Okay. No, I, I get what you're saying. And no, I, and I'm not saying any of these things to say that I think, I do believe it all worked out for mm -hmm. my good. Mm -hmm. It still is. Um, it's just those these those the stories y'all have right. you all have your stories about things when you grew up but yeah so those are just some of the stories and like I said we there's several great things mm -hmm. um but I guess like I said I think in terms of the preparation of just knowing knowing that regardless of all the things mm -hmm. you all have my back mm -hmm. Um, and hold on. Well, I think one of the things you got to recognize is what I, what I look at all this is despite the, the challenges that were there, the good times, uh, we were not the best parents. We weren't the worst parents, but we were parents that loved you and wanted the best for you. Mm -hmm. And we raised you based on the way we were raised. And so the discipline, the structure, what I instilled was based on the instruction that was, was instilled in me. And uh, I, I think what you got to look at too, is that although we made mistakes along the way, we tried to correct as we went along. And, and what, I, what I am most proud of is the drive and determination that came out of it that you have. Um, I think back to you know, you're playing basketball in high school and, and your drive there, you wouldn't quit, you wouldn't give up. You know, when you decided that, hey, I want to go to college and I want to be a lawyer, mm -hmm. you, know, you pressed on, you drove, and, and you didn't give up, you didn't quit. And even now as a professional, that same zeal, that same passion, that same drive, is you get locked in on something, you got that what we call the bulldog tenacity. <laughs> you grab hold and you won't let go until you succeed. And I think that in itself is, is a tremendous plus. You know, I don't I don't profess that we did everything right in terms of parenting. We made some mistakes along the way. Uh, but I look at you overall and, and the growth and the development, and I'm extremely proud of, of, of who you are mm -hmm. and who you've become and how you consistently carry yourself you know do we all have areas of improvement yes without without question but but you have excelled and i am extremely proud and grateful of your uh where you are and where you where you're on your way to thank god for it
that's what's most important. Well, yes, I would wholeheartedly agree in terms of, I guess, what one of the biggest lessons or takeaways from how we were raised is my word, my word is my bond. <laughs> um, if I say, you know, if I say I'm going to do something, then I'm going to do it or I'm going to do everything in my power to do it. Um, and when I make up my mind <laughs> to do something, I'm going to figure it out. Um, and I would say also in terms of how I carry myself or when I go out, one of the things I would say for mom that although I say it kind of jokingly now, you know, don't leave the house with your hair looking like a switch broom, <laughs> but, and I know, I now know that is a, <laughs> that is a grandma thing. But from that, it's, I've always, even though I'm not the, I would say I'm not the girly girl, I haven't always been the girly girl and I'm not always going to be, you know, necessarily in heels and makeup or whatever, but I take pride in how I look when I go outside. So even if I'm in jeans and a t-shirt, trust me, it's going to match to the point of even when I go work out, <laughs> I need what I'm wearing to match and coordinate and I need to look presentable at all times. In, it's but learning that it's it's my version of mm -hmm. what is you know what I'm comfortable in but I'm I'm going to be presentable um because I'm representing not just myself but my family so mm -hmm. um I would say yeah that's that is definitely one of the biggest things and being a a giver because that's something at all ages I can look back and think of you all giving or providing for our mm -hmm. house always being the place that people you know were having gatherings so like and that's definitely something that has carried over mm -hmm. for me in my personal life not as much with covid but <laughs> um i enjoy having gatherings and hosting mm -hmm. i have a whole bunch of kitchen you know stuff that people be like let's well, hey why you got all this adult furniture all these things um but i like entertaining mm -hmm. um and as soon as i was in a position to do like i remember in law school when we would have downtime, like people that well, come, you can come over here to study or we can do this or I was mm -hmm. cooking for people. So that's something else that I would say that I have taken um, from you all. Definitely the traveling. <laughs> um, more than I want to at times. But like I said, I, when you say it all works out for, you know, it's all good in the end. Like I said, one of the biggest things is I know that even as I have been doing this adulting thing <laughs> reluctantly sometimes um you know even in as i over the, i think the last few years of mistakes that have been made you all have still been there to i guess go talk to the, the principal or talk to the teacher <laughs> so to speak um but to pick me up when i fall and i'm trying not to get emotional but i already am but so <laughs> That's why I say I am mm, <laughs> beyond grateful for you all. And yes, I might give you all a hard time <laughs> about the different moments. I am definitely, I am who I am because of you all and not in spite of. Especially when I, in some of the different <laughs> career you know jobs or positions I've held um and looking at it interacting with people and having conversations with my sister or even friends of just like yeah this wasn't the norm um you know some of the standards or the things mm. that you all gave were just having uh, like I joke with one of my friends of like oh our parents they kind of they set it up set us up because you know okay with these standards and you know <laughs> Expect, not even expectations, but you raise with raise us with standards and mm -hmm. how to conduct yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you get out here and realize like, oh, everybody didn't have that and everyone doesn't hold these things in the same um regard. And so it's just like I am ooh, thank you, Felix and Violet. Um and I would say the other thing too is getting to know you all as people. Wait a minute, it's your birthday. <laughs> Yeah, but I wouldn't be here if you, like you said. <laughs> if y'all didn't do what y'all were doing, if y'all didn't do. It's your birthday. Right. But if you all did not come together and do the things that you needed to do. Right. Um, I would not be here. 
Exactly. Um, but I can say, let me say this. I am truly, truly, truly godly proud that I, I can call you my daughter, that God gave me the opportunity to be your mom. Mm. I mean, you've excelled, surely. We fall, we get up, we fall, we get up, we get up, but we continue to get up, and that's what you've done over the years. Obstacles came, challenges came, I mean, an attack <coughs> from the left, an attack from the right, but you withstood it, and that's what makes you Latavia. And that's the, the I mean, that's the awesomeness of you going into this new year. And, and, the and that's, piece, that's, that's awesome. And the other piece is, not only have we given to you, you are now giving back to us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's a blessing is that when you have, have, have children and you're able to help them to, to grow and develop to a point that they can stand on their own mm -hmm. and out of the gratitude and appreciation of what was done for them to now to reach back and say, hey mom, hey dad, Here's a, a way that I can help you, mm -hmm. and you've done that, and you're doing that. And so, the, again, it, it, it is so much to be grateful for and to be thankful for. And so it's not a, a, an area of being proud or boastful, but, but definitely being godly proud that uh, the way you've turned out, mm -hmm. the way you're turning out, the way you're handling yourself is, is extremely impressive and, and, and very grateful that the lessons that we attempted to, to pass on You've learned, and and you're applying them. Mm -hmm. Maybe so much, so much in some ways, uh, to the extreme, <laughs> but but you definitely are applying them, and I think that that's helpful. Yeah, that's that's what's important. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I appreciate you all for taking this trip down memory lane. With me. <laughs> definitely a memory lane, as well as you know, <laughs> revealing some things. Um, but as you pointed out earlier, the podcast is called It's All Good. And that is, as I go through this journey of adulting, learning that it is a journey, it's a process, mm -hmm. and not being so focused on whatever the end goal is, but learning to enjoy and appreciate the, you know, being in the moment, the small things that turn into mm -hmm. to bigger things. So thank you all for joining. Thank you all for being my parents um, <laughs> you're welcome and you're you. welcome and thank you all for listening <laughs> um as i always say even though it doesn't look like it or feel like it remember that in the end it is all working together for your good mm -hmm. and to take the time to enjoy the process Amen. until next time